can't think of a better example of mathematicians inventing terms to overcomplicate simple concepts than measures of central tendency. These complex sounding words really just make up another term for mean, median, and mode. That's right, the mean, median, and mode that you studied way back in elementary school. You'll recall that the mean is just another word for the average. To find the mean, we calculate the sum of the data entries and divide them by the total number of data entries. We've all done this before when we calculate our overall average, for instance. This is probably the most used measure of central tendency, potentially even overused in favor of the others, perhaps wrongfully so. Being able to calculate the median for a set of data at times is more powerful and more applicable than calculating the average. Remember, the median is the middle value of a set of data after you've organized it from least to greatest. If you have an even number of data values, take the average of the middle two to determine the median. As a teacher, I find the median very helpful when I'm analyzing the results of a major assessment. If my median is very high, for instance, 85, that means half the class got above 85 and half got below. That's a promising statistic. However, if the median is very low, for instance, 35%, that means half the class got above 35 and half the class got below 35. That paints a pretty powerful picture. Lastly, the mode of a set of data values refers to the data value that occurs the most often. You can have no mode, one mode, or more than one mode, depending on your set of data. Now that we've reviewed mean, median, and mode, let's look at an example that applies them. I have a table of data that summarizes the temperature in degrees Celsius over the course of seven days. I'm being asked to find the mean, median, and mode for this set of data. Recall that to determine the mean, I can just add up all of the data entries and divide by the total number of data entries. In this case, adding all the data values and dividing by the seven days for which I've collected the data, I get 31.7 degrees Celsius. So I can say the average temperature over the course of seven days was 31.7 degrees Celsius. To find the median, writing my values out from least to greatest looks like this. What I can do is cross off one data value on each end of the set until I've narrowed down the middle of the data. In this case, the middle of my data set is 29 degrees Celsius. That tells me that half of the temperatures were above 29 degrees Celsius and half were below. The mode is usually the easiest to find. We simply look for the data value that occurs the most often. In this table of seven days, you can see that for three of those days, we had a temperature of 29 degrees. Therefore, we say our mode is 29 degrees Celsius. Another interesting question we can ask is whether or not there are any outliers in the data. We can define an outlier as a data value that deviates significantly from the trend of the data set. If you take a look at this scatter plot here, and you know anything about lines of best fit, I can draw a straight line through my set of data, such that there are an even number of points above and below, in order to model the overall trend of the data. However, you can see this data value here deviates significantly from the overall trend of my data, suggesting that this data value is an outlier. If I graph my seven temperatures over time, you can see that on the fifth day I had a temperature of 45 degrees. This temperature is significantly higher than the six other temperatures throughout the week, suggesting that this could be seen as an outlier. We can analyze how this 45 degree temperature affects the mean and recalculate the mean using a total of six temperatures. By doing this, the average temperature drops to 29.5 degrees, which is much more in line with both our median and our mode. So the 45 degree outlier definitely affects the mean. If I remove it from my data set and look at the median, you can see that I'm forced to look at the average between 29 and 29, the two middle values of my new data set. This does not change my median of 29, suggesting that the 45 degree outlier does not affect the median in this case. Removing the data value of 45 degrees does not affect the mode either. Therefore, we can say the only measure of central tendency that is affected by the outlier is the mean. So after this analysis, we can ask ourselves the question, which measure of central tendency best describes the data? While most people usually lean on the mean, We've shown here that in this case, this 45 degree outlier actually inflates our average, so we can rule that one out. The median and the mode are both equal in this case, so I would argue either of these is actually a better representation of the patterns involved in this data. 